way back when you moved to town, uh, what year? 1980. Wow. 1980. And I think if I read correctly, a couple within a couple of years, you were penning some hits for people. Yeah. I had a top five record, like the first year and a half I was in town, which was a miracle. Cause I thought wow. surely it's going to take four or five years. And, um, then had a bunch of other cuts and, um, what was so funny is I, I came to town and had a couple of people that were interested in me. And the one guy who wanted to sign me as a writer, Jim Dow, he said, well, you need to go to uh, ask, uh, what was it, CSAC and talk to these people because when you get a cut, they pay you right away. And so I, I went and met with the woman that was at the head of CSAC at the time. And I played her like five songs and she looked at me and she said, you just need to move home. <laughs> so I, I wasn't expecting that from somebody who was in a like a BMI CSAC kind of thing that's supposed to encourage writers, but I yeah. guess she was encouraged any, to give up. And so <laughs> I was pretty crushed. And I went back and told the guy, you know, well, she told me to move back home and and he kind of laughed at that. But then like two weeks later, I got like six songs cut in two oh, weeks, you know, wow, and awesome. so you, you just got to. You just got to go with what you believe. And then there was a, you know, a dry spell after that, but it was like, well, it doesn't have to be what anybody else says it is. And you just got to, if you believe in what you're doing, you got to stay there and not take what anybody else says as uh, your, your Bible on how things should go. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, I, I don't, I don't know what you call it. I call it gator skin. I grew it in Nashville. Um, for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, uh, if you don't, if you start taking those no's personally and those statements personally, there was a particular day, and I remember them vividly, and I'll never name names, but I <laughs> uh, right. had a 10 a.m. appointment for a hopeful publishing deal and a 2, a 2 p.m. appointment uh, for one. And uh, the first one basically told me the same thing. You know, I walked in, I had then my cassette and my typed out pages, and I was ready to play the song. Mm -hmm. and, Halfway through the second one, they stopped me and threw my lyrics in the trash and said, man, you're, you're taking up good space for a good songwriter. You need to get out of here. You know, um, mm -hmm. did the same thing. Uh, basically, the 2 p.m. said did the same thing. And I went home that night and wrote a song that I love um, and a lot of folks seem to be drawn to called Grateful. And uh, I was like, what can I take out of this day that's been complete crap? And, um, it, most people would just ca cashed it in and went to bed. And, um, I thought, right. no, and I started to, and I thought, Hey, maybe I can sit down and write something. Um, did that, obviously you got those cuts a couple weeks later. Did, did those experiences, did they motivate you? Like they motivated me. I mean, it was like, I'm going to show them. Did, did that? Sure. I mean, yeah, that, that was the thing. It was, um, one of those, well, I'm going to show her that, yeah. that she's wrong, you yeah. know, and, um, just as, as much as luck as anything else, those things happen like two weeks later or whatever. And so yeah. what was funny was Jim ran into her and she said, Hey, that kid moved back to, to Kentucky. And he said, well, actually he's gotten like six cuts in the last two weeks. And one of them's going to be a single on Gary Morris, which ended up being the top five record that we had. So you just got to, you just got to get your alligator skin. You're right. And you got to know that when you're going to play something for somebody or pitch somebody, did they have a fight with their wife or their husband that morning? Or, you know, was their dog been sick or, you know, what, what kind of mood are they in? And, yeah. um, you just got to know that it may be them as much as you. And, you know, Dean Dillon said one time that for every 600 songs he writes, he gets six cut. And that was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, which I think the number's probably less than that now with less artists or whatever. But, you know, still, Dean Dillon, 600 songs, six cuts. Man. So you got to know that you got to put in your work and hopefully, you know, if you're, you've written 600 songs, maybe six of them will be cut, you know. And um, I'd like to dig into the other 594 of those tunes. <laughs> I know. Isn't that the truth? 